Hi everybody, it's Jesse here from One Heart Fire. Um, I'm in Orange County visiting my family and I wanted to show you guys around one of my favorite places here. A uh, really good example of what can be done. Uh, this is called Pitcher Park. This is in Orange, California. And uh, the Pitchers were uh, one of the original farming families here in Orange County, obviously named for all the orange groves that used to be here. Um, now it's mostly suburb suburbia, urban setting. But what they did was they donated their little homestead to the city of Orange to be a public park. And it's still here to this day. So let me show you around, show you what we got. As you can see right here along the uh, sidewalk, there's an entire big long hedge of grapevines. And uh, they've got grapes on them already coming in for this year. Up here above us we got an av avocado tree. Next to that, we got a loquat tree. You can see it's starting to starting to fruit out a little bit. Actually, it it already fruited, and that's kind of what's left over. This is one of my favorite trees, one of my favorite fruits. They're so tasty. Beautiful tree too. This is their kind of original barn over here. Over here, we got more grapevines. On the side, this is a, a fajoa, pineapple guava, kind of uh, made into a little hedge here. These can also grow into big trees. Uh, these flowers, kind of done flowering now, but these are actually really tasty, the flowers themselves. You can see it's starting to make little, little fruits too. Walk along this way. Right here, this is a stone fruit, probably a peach, maybe a nectarine. Grown here in this public park. I'm not sure if this might be a guava. This is a guava right here. There's several guavas in this uh, park, different kinds. Walking over here, there's a couple more guavas. Big old fig right here. Oh, a mission fig. This is a red mulberry tree. Uh, it's getting ready to fruit. When it fruits, there's just so many mulberries here. The birds love them. You gotta catch them, catch them when they're ripe. A week or two, you can come and get really delicious mulberries. Oh, there's a couple up there. Getting ready. Out in this, we've got a few more stone fruit plants coming in. The city's installed. What's this? Prunus persica. This picture made a terrific peach cobbler. So this is a peach tree. Got a couple more peach trees in the back here as well. This, these are three massive avocado trees. Um, we've come and got avocados off these many times. Let me show you down in here. Most of the time, public parks they pick up all the leaf litter and bring it out. This is what happens when you don't take out the leaf litter because they don't take it out from under this tree. Look how thick this is. Look how thick this is. And look at the soil underneath it just rich, even though it's hard clay packed soil here, it's just rich, full of organic matter. That's because they've left this, just let the leaves build up like a tree naturally wants to do. We'll walk around over here. Here we've got even more guava trees, along with this little grove of fig trees. These are starting to come in too. Uh, we've got the big purple mission figs here, as well as a couple yellow palmyra figs. It's just these trees have been pruned down to stay small. And man, these are these are delicious, delicious figs. Technically, you're not allowed to come here and pick fruit, but I've never come here in the summertime seen fruit fruit on the ground. And you know, a lot of people say you can't plant can't plant fruit in public places, fruit trees, because they're going to cause a mess, but fruit is delicious and people pick it, so, you know, there's a lot to be said about fruit in public places. You see, there is a little bit of grass here. Not a whole lot. I mean, grass has its purpose. There's this nice little hill to hang out on, a grassy area to have a picnic. It serves its purpose, but we don't need it in front of everybody's house. We got another fig tree. Lots of figs on these trees this year. Uh, we got a grow of bananas right here. Uh, I've had banana trees here in Southern California. They produce, but not very good. 
there might be some varieties that would actually produce good edible bananas. We got another guava tree coming in, making some fruits right now. Big old pomegranate tree. It's already making some fruit. Up here, I'm not sure what these ones are. Maybe y'all can help me identify them. But they have these uh, kind of yellow apple looking fruits that are kind of like custard inside. It's almost like a cherimoya. Uh, I haven't eaten pawpaw yet. It sounds like what people describe that as, but they're, they're round and they have like two to three large seeds in the middle of them. White flesh, tastes like vanilla pudding almost. It's delicious. But uh, there's no, a lot of these trees have tags on them telling you what they are, but this one doesn't. And then as we keep walking around the park, there's that big uh, loquat tree. Over here we got, this is one of the biggest uh, bird of paradise plants I've ever seen. You can see the flower up there. It's kind of just ornamental. They plant a lot in Southern California. Got another little hideaway grove over here. Another avocado back here. And then this is also, you see a kind of a date palm. You see all these dates on the ground here. You'll see palm trees just sprouting up in here all the time. Got more bird of paradise. Another avocado tucked in back over there. Got some citrus trees over here. That one's got some fruit on it. As you can see, all the fruit's been picked except for what's too high to get at. And then over here we have some more of those uh, mystery trees. Or these might be the persimmons. There's a couple of persimmon trees in here too. The uh, the squishy orange persimmon. I think the fuyu. And we've got another. This is another one of those mystery cur uh, like uh, custard type fruit plants here. And then we've got another really large loquat tree over here. These are really delicious when they come in. So as you can see, there's, you know, we got more, uh, more citrus trees back there. And there's all this undergrowth here. There's all this understory. It's all just uh, kind of ornamental stuff, but there's already an abundance of food being produced here, mostly fruit. If all this understory is planted with roots and vines and nitrogen fixing support plants, perennial berries. This part could be producing a massive amounts of food. You know, all, a lot of this permaculture stuff, food forests, growing food at your house, it seems revolutionary now, but I mean, back in the day, this is, this is just living. This is what people did. They couldn't go to the grocery store and buy all these fruit that we buy from Chile and Australia and all that. So they grew it at their house. But I guess the point I'm trying to get at with this video is think of all the little public parks in little neighborhoods. You know, if every single neighborhood block had a park like this with fruit trees in it, food growing underneath it, people wouldn't have to buy food at the grocery store. They could go and pick fruit at the, uh, at the corner, you know. They might have to go buy their staples, but there'd be food growing in a public park. We're already paying for the landscapers to come and clean up. You know, to weed and, and, and take care of the plants. Why don't they take care of food plants? Why don't we do this on every street in every neighborhood in America? We could we could feed ourselves, we could change the world with what we already have in place. So think about that and I'm glad I could show you around one of my favorite places in Orange County. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like my videos, please do subscribe and feel free to share them around social media. These videos are made possible by the generous donations of my supporters. So if you'd like to make a donation, you can do so via PayPal or Bitcoin. If you'd like to offer ongoing support, please do consider becoming a patron through my page at patreon.com slash Grind. I've got a lot planned for this year and lots more videos in the works, which I hope will inspire others to take the leap into their own adventures in homesteading permaculture. So once again, thank you for watching, and thank you for joining me in building a better world through Permaculture.